This is going to start a four-part series dealing with the Home Range Analysis Lab for the Advanced GIS class. Um, we're going to go over four different basic things. In this first part, I'm going to introduce the data that we're going to use uh, for the Home Range calculations and talk about some methods for collecting the data. Um, parts two, three, and four, we'll get into some of the nitty gritties about the tools we'll be running. Okay, so first of all, what is a home range? A home range is basically an area used by animals to meet their daily needs, and um, they can overlap with home ranges of neighboring animals. Um, the home range size can be an important indicator of habitat quality or distribution of resources or competition. Um, and um, just terminology-wise, territories are part of home ranges and are defended by the pack from other individuals or groups. We're going to be talking about coyotes. Um, it's important to know that this is, um, home ranges are dynamic. They're going to depend and be influenced by um, resource changes, weather changes, seasonal changes, things like that. Maybe not weather, that might be a stretch. I'm not an animal um, specialist. I do GIS work, so I become a um, dabbler in all and an expert of none, so take what I say with a grain of salt. Um, this should be a pretty interesting process for you. And if you're not into coyotes, think about all of the other kind of home ranges that you can calculate, whether it's for yourself, using pings on your cell phone, um, different species, human beings, um, traffic in national parks. Uh, this can be calculated for lots of individuals. Okay, this week's data was collected by Brian Kluver um, um, under the supervision of Eric Giese, both in the Wild Department at Utah State University, and it's being used with their permission. It's also a subset of a much larger data set. We're going to be looking at seven different coyotes out of hundreds um, that they've collected data on over the year. So how do we collect information about home ranges? Um, what we're going to be using are uh, data points from GPS collars that are placed on the animal. They come in all shapes and sizes. You've got um, collection information on sheep, on elephants, on cats. Where do house cats go all day? GPS maps reveal their secret lives. So this is kind of like what the data might look like. Um, a series of points. Um, this has been converted to tracks to track where animals are going. Um, and it also can track you. How do we do this? Um, the GPS signal coming from your cell phone is tracking what you're doing all day long, every day. And that could end up being useful information to use as well. This is my favorite picture. Um, not that one. This poor woman who, whose baby has fallen out of the buggy, but she didn't drop the call. You gotta love that. Okay, so radio collar is one way. Another classic way of collecting location information is by um, using telemetry, kind of triangulation. So the animal has um, a collar attached to it, and you're picking up signals and getting a distance to the animal, and if you can triangulate and get a distance from multiple directions to this animal, um, then you can calculate a location on the surface. Um, so it's it's an older method. It's been around for a long time. It's a lot more labor intensive um, by humans because you have to travel around and you need to get um, distance information from um, a bunch of different locations. Uh, the GPS tracking um, is a lot more malleable, it's a lot faster, um, it's also a lot more expensive. But the collars communicate uh, via internet or satellite um, and ping a location at any user-defined period of time. Um, and then you download the data periodically, or the collar can sometimes store a certain amount of data in it. Okay, so how do we use the data? We can use it to uh, determine activity patterns, establish and calculate home ranges, um, look at territories, habitat selection, and uh, get a better understanding of population dynamics. Um, this is a plot 
of coyote number 362, um, looking at its movement over time. Red uh, was a collection of data points in 2009. Blue is 2011, 2012, and 2014. So, so for some reason, um, this, this coyote was moving not far. It's a very small home range for a coyote. So, you know, you never know. Did some, some other creature move in and start, you know, pushing this thing to the southwest? Um, anyway, some of the things that we can learn about home ranges. Uh, it's important to know that the locations, the pings, the GPS coordinates are taken at regular intervals. They're recorded and stored as coordinates. And so then we can plot them up like this. But um, that's usually all the data that you get. And that's it for part one.